Okay, I think think we're live now. Um, so thanks everyone for being here. We'll get started in just a minute. Um, with me, I have Marianne, and I should have asked you how to pronounce your last name properly. Can you say it? Giger. Giger. Okay, Marianne Giger with us, who's a city councilor from Montreal. Um, thank you so much for being here, Marianne. It's our pleasure. <laughs> great, great. And yeah, Marianne and I met um, about a year ago when a group of Burlington elected officials and, and city staff and um, ad community advocates and, and local um, organizations came up to Montreal to get a tour of a, the, the bike infrastructure and the pedestrian infrastructure um, and learn about how they maintain that throughout the winter um, and, and what they've done over the past few years. So really excited to reconnect with you um, and, and dig a bit deeper and, and talk about what you all have done up there because it's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. um, great. So yeah, if you could just start and maybe, and, and for everyone who's joining, this is um, our weekly webinar with Sustainable Transportation Vermont. Normally, Brianna Jassett hosts, but I wanted to to sub in this week and host and, and talk with Marianne. Um, and my name is Jack Hansen and I'm the internship coordinator for Sustainable Transportation Vermont. Um, I'm also a city councilor in Burlington. Um, so thanks for being with us and you can post your questions or comments um, live in the chat as well. Um, so yeah, Marianne, if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved in Montreal politics. Uh, I got involved a long time ago, more than 15 years ago, when uh, the, the, the very beginnings of uh, my political party, when, when it was born, uh, we were a group of advocates uh, looking for pacifying Montreal streets. Uh, there was a, the, the leader at that moment had released a, a book, an essay that was called the... Sorry, the weird noises in my house. <laughs> no problem. Um, the book was called a Black, uh, The Black Book of Automobile. And it was really uh, like it, it yeah, it, it got me really into trying to change the, the place that is taken by cars in, in our cities in, in Montreal. And I was reading Jane Jacobs and, so this is how it, it all started. I was just an advocate with this party, which was a very left green party at that time. But uh, 15 years later, we got elected. We took uh, power in Montreal. Uh, so it was three years ago. Uh, but I was elected before that because I'm, I was, uh, we were, the, in Montreal you have the boroughs and you have the city and each borough has its own council. So you can be elected on, on a council and be in power in a borough without being in the power at the city level. So we could, uh, we were able to do many, many changes uh, at the scale of the borough, which is anyway, quite big. It's 100,000 people. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, this is how it's all, it all started. and. Being a, a cyclist myself, sin, ever since I live in Montreal, uh, being a four-season cyclist, I those those issues were just so natural for me to to defend and to put forward. Great, great. So so there's a local govern there's local governments at the borough level that are distinct from the city government itself. Yes, yes. Boroughs have a lot of own powers uh, regarding urbanism, for example, and its local uh, streets. Got it. Great, great. And then you started on the, the actual Montreal City Council. When, when, did you, when were you elected to Montreal? Uh, on the City Council, like with Valérie Planck, which is the, the mayor, which is the first women mayor of Montreal, it was uh, exactly three years ago. So there's, uh, we're at the, the last year of our term, because we have four years terms. Great, great. So the, yeah, and the, I was I was named uh, well responsible for all active transports issues. So this is what I was I've, I've been working on since three years. Great. It was not easy at first. You know, you come to power and you you always think, okay, we're going to be able to 
make the revolution or something, but it's quite long. Montreal is a huge city. It's it's a, the the administration is is big, and there are many many people in place. And you don't get to change how everything works and how everyone thinks that fast. So of course it's a bit frustrating when you 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 gain finally the power and you have to wait and you have to yeah when when you have one project for example you you have to wait for like three three two or three years before actually seeing it appearing on the territory so it goes fast for years when it's your first mandate yeah great well we'll we'll get all into into all that and how many city councilors are there in montreal in montreal there's a total of 102 city uh well city are city are borough councillors the city council itself with with only the city councillors it's a 65 okay uh, a 65 group of people debating great great and it's it's a full-time position right and fully paid and yeah yeah absolutely great, great. okay all right great well yeah we can we can jump into your presentation and really um, you can give us an overview of what's been going on and a lot of the work that you all have done to change the the streets and the infrastructure there. Let me just mm -hmm. um, show this and I'll hide myself. Well, you can hide me too if you...
You can change. Hey, Marianne, I don't know if you can hear me, but we're getting people are putting in that there's not um, sound coming through. So can people all, can they, can you all hear us now? Um, I'm just looking in the chat and a bunch of people wrote that they couldn't, they couldn't hear. Oh, that's weird. Um, they could see it, but they couldn't hear it. So um, I'm waiting to see. Okay, people are saying they can hear now, but it is a little yeah. smaller, the slideshow. Let me hide myself. Oh, no. So that means you didn't hear me from the beginning. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, well, I can just try to wrap up what you've seen without hearing me. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. I guess that by hiding myself, we also, oh, that's, that's sad. So what you've seen was, the, um, was me being happy at the very beginning of the presentation because I'll be talking about more. Yeah, if when yeah, okay, I can go fast, so you can change to the next. So there was a, a citizen inauguration. You can change, uh, Jack. Thank you. Uh, so this new network, this new bike path was uh, inaugurated by the citizens because they were so happy about it. And I was saying that you understood that those historical photos shows that 45 years ago, it all started in Montreal with a group advocating for better infrastructures for cyclists. That guy disguised in, in Moses now was trying to say that we needed a bike path to cross the river because we could not uh, separate the waters of the river to go from one shore to, uh, to another in Montreal, and, and, and it worked. So, the advocating for bicycle in Montreal is uh, as a huge and great story and today uh, with what we've seen it's got it's some kind of a, I was using the name uh, oh, I forgot the word I was using I'm sorry but an accomplishment of all the work that all those people have been doing so next you can see um, on the next uh, slides uh, a glimpse of what has been done in Montreal since then uh, 10 years ago, or this is my more like the first bike path that they were all uh, very narrow, they were all bi-directional, and most of them didn't uh, remove a lane or, par or parking lane, but those one in downtown did. And then after it went slowly, as I, I was saying, uh, it was a, there was a, a period where the admin administration in place, uh, they wanted to add kilometers. They wanted to have the data, the numbers. Oh, we've had 50 kilometers of bicycle network each year, but it was mainly by painting the road. So we all know that it's not efficient. Uh, it's not sufficient for most people. They don't feel safe and comfortable on it. But at least some of those examples, like we have here on the pictures uh, in the borough where we were elected locally, and we could do uh, a little bolder things, uh, for example, removing the parking lane on one side so that it's easier to plow in the winter. Uh, but we still have, we still had some, a lot of problem to fix. Here you can see that some of the bike lanes, the old one, were st still closing in the winter because they couldn't figure out how to remove the snow from it. So you don't, you probably don't see the the dates on the this um, on the side of the road saying that it's going to be closed for the winter month. Even though there are each year more and more people that keep on ride their bikes in the winter. This is a picture I took last year, and I was just amazed. It was after a it was cold and it was after a snowfall and there was that much people in the morning going to their job or to, to school. And we know by the numbers that it's been increasing in the winter, people on their bikes, some kind of uh, four times more people than five years ago. So we got to the next level about uh, 
when we were elected uh, right now at the level of the city, so being the official party uh, in power. So those are examples of things that were made recently. Uh, at the, so we've had, uh, 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 how do you say that? You know, that dooring zone uh, in between the lanes so that they're safer. Uh, we've, on the other slide at the right, you can see that all the parking have, has been removed to, uh, to make room for protected bike path, which are not protected by concrete. It's not solid yet, but at least it's a lot faster to do and it's still uh, comfortable and you can plow it in the winter. And I'm never sure how to say plow, plow. Um, I mean, removing the snow when I say it, I hope you, you won't mind my weird accent. So this is brand new. And this one is something that we've announced recently. Uh, you can see on the right side how it looks right now. It's a very important avenue in Montreal. It goes from Mont Royal, from Parc La Fontaine, and goes through lots of patrimonial sites and uh, buildings. And the poor bike lane there <laughs> is always occupied by parking, uh, temporary parking. So this is what we're going to do. And this is something we want to do a lot. To add, when every time we add a bike infrastructures, we add trees uh, because I don't have to explain to people like you guys why we have to add many as many trees as we can in our city. And the street, which is called Pine Avenue, doesn't have any trees. So this is coming next year. Next. And we have the famous REV, so the Réseau Express Vélo, which is our like the spine of the bicycle network we want to add in Montreal, a little bit like the uh, bicycle superhighways in London, for example. So it's we're presenting it as the, the the subway of the network for cyclists. And the first the first five one that you see on the map uh, are being made or finalized this year and will be next year. So it was a huge announce because the Réseau Express Vélo is made to be uh, unidirectional and a lot wider so that you can pass someone when you go in and every and intersections are treated so that every movement is separated. So it's a very huge step, which we're really proud of. And I'm going to show you uh, how it looks so you can go on the slide. This is the first one, which was an easy one and a bi-directional, but since it's along a railway, it doesn't matter because you don't cross any intersections. It was the first one made, and then I said, ah, the red, uh, how do you call those? I don't know. The I don't know. Anyway, I didn't like the red, so we made them blue. Anyway, go, you can go on. Um, Oh, well, here you have them green. Anyway, it's just a, a festival of colors in Montreal. But on that street, a very, very long street that goes through the island, uh, parking were removed from on both sides of the street. So you can have those protected uh, lane uh, and very comfortable. You can go. Um, you can change. We've also worked hard to add, not only on the Rev, but everywhere, uh, those little green boxes that are made to wait uh, in a safe way and in a safer place for cyclists. I don't know how you call them, we call them SAS. So anyway, we've added a lot of them, even though it's, it's expensive and it goes away fast with the plowing machines, but we still need them, okay? We can change. And this is what we've been showing people to to everyone that is saying, uh, you're taking all the space, there's no space left for cars, there's no space left for parking. Well, we can show them how it was before, how the space was uh, distributed and how it is right now. So this is an example on for that street, on Belshaz Street, of the before and after. So people in car still can see that there are there's space remaining for them. You can change. 
This is another example. This one is under construction uh, right now. It's going to be finished next year. So it is truly downtown on Peel Street. This is going to be a uh, at the same level or just or between the street and the sidewalks also with a lot of new trees being planted next this is how it's gonna be the the the, the, the uh, how the space is now shared on on this street you can see there were no cycling infrastructures at all before and this is saint denis Oh, okay, go. you can go. This is Saint Denis, uh, the, the the great one that I was talking at the very beginning, uh, which is the another new one that has just been inaugurated uh, last week. Uh, so we took uh, one lane on each direction, one circulation lane to add the bike path, so you can change. This is how it was before. So this is one part of it that was very uh, uh, a one a one way, a very large one way that was unnecessary. And on the next, you can see how it looks now. Those are the the. the I could have go and take the picture. I have so many pictures of the rev right now, but it's it's still very uh, how it, how it is. Even though it's a uh, it's just a. Uh, a drawing. This is how it is right now, or how it's going to be when it's snowing. Next. So another example of how it changed, how the re repartition, I don't know if it's a good word, how it changed for every mode. Okay, next. And this is Saint Denis Street. So it's on the Plateau Mont Royal. It's the heart of the merchant uh, shopping arteries. And this is this one was like this, you know, you had four ways, four lines of circulation and two lines of parking. Uh, people didn't want to go there because it was it felt like an highway, car would speed, it was noisy, and the merchants were complaining that no one never came to their store and they would find so many reasons for that. And the answer was this: so changing the street. You can um, so this is how it looks right now. Those were the images that we used to show how it would look. You can change. And we had to be very uh, flexible because you have the uh, the restaurant, they put a terrace, I don't know how you call it, place to eat outside. So in the summer, we're gonna have to redo the lane so we can go around those, uh, Terrace. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can change. And this is a street where people used to bike, even though there were no infrastructures. But we had, in the last five years, we have had uh, three cyclists that were killed on, on that specific street on Saint Denis. So it was very uh, important to us to correct that also. On the right, you can see. Uh, the entry of a, a, a down a down path, how you say that? Something that goes under a railway. You can change. You, I guess we can see them the, the, pla the place better. So on the on the left, it's how it was, and just under the underpass, you can see where once young women have been smashed by a big truck, um, and she had to take that every day and. In the opposition, we were asking and asking for them to change it and to make it a lot safer, and they could not do it. And on the right, this is what we did. So we just add a protected bike lane by removing one car lane, and things are still going very good for circulation, and the cyclists are now safe. This is something very bold, I think, that we made. Uh, engineers are telling me that it's a kind of almost unique. <laughs> uh, well, in Canada, I don't know if in North America, those very huge uh, pedestrian cross, but in between intersections. So this is at the middle of one block. We've put that. Uh, there's no fire, no light. 
uh, people just cross and cars do have to stop. I, I know in the United States, it's very common for cars to stop at pedestrian cross, but here, no, people don't do that, <laughs> even though it's mandatory. So it's a culture that we really need to change, but putting this really works and it's, and it's beautiful, you're gonna see, because you can change because we've been able to plant trees in the middle of the street. So on the right, this is how it was at the same place, how it is today. So when the trees and everything's gonna be planted in the, in the spring, it's gonna be just beautiful and so easy to, to shop. And this is the before and after regarding the uh, allocation of space on Saint Denis. Um, other things we've been doing, so I'm just going very fast on everything we've been doing, but we have a big C, the bike, the shared uh, bicycle that are public, that are uh, managed uh, by a, by a Montreal. Um, and we've added a thousand and five, one hundred and five hundred new uh, uh, assisted, electric, as, electric assisted i don't know how you say that but those bicycles are do have a battery and it's easier to go with them so they're assisted by electricity and it's a huge success so it's uh, uh fast it's more easy for more people to use bicycle in montreal right now and uh i wanted to talk uh, just a little bit about this specific summer. We've added lots and lots of pop-up bike bike lanes uh, so that people can go around easier in the city in this uh, COVID summer where we couldn't go to hug and quit as we usually do everyone. <laughs> um, so they were very, very popular. We couldn't keep them for the winter because they were not made to be uh, Plow in the in the winter, and we also add uh, pedestrian streets. So the opportunity of the COVID summer made us make huge steps uh, regarding active transport and human scale city. So for one thing, it was uh, a good thing. So yeah, it was very fast. I'm sorry if I was not clear all the time looking for my words, but. Uh, uh, I hope uh, we can now take time to uh, answer your questions and go deeper. Ah. Great, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And especially doing it in your second language too. We really appreciate it. I was trying to say, when you were looking for words, I was trying to say them, but I think you couldn't hear me through the stream. No. Because I wasn't there. It would but, have helped, but anyway. No, but thank you so much. That was, that was great. And it's pretty amazing um, what you all have done. Um, so coming out of that, just some questions for you um, that I'll ask and then we'll have, we have some questions coming in um, that people are posting that we can get to. So as a result of these dramatic improvements that you all have made with walk and bike infrastructure, um, what has been the increase in people walking and biking? I think you said at one point, four times as many people biking compared to five years ago in the winter. Is that, is that the number? Yeah, the last number I've seen for the winter uh, counting because we have a lot of uh, counters on, on the network. So right. it was like 400, uh, 425% more between uh, 2019 and five years earlier. It's amazing. And this is something we've been counting, even though you, like you need to integrate all those numbers with the, uh, like being be careful because you have full numbers and you have so many others uh, uh, parametric or anyway mm -hmm. things to analyze. But still, um, as I always say uh, to, uh, we always say build it and they will come. And now I always say uh, plow it and they will stay. Yeah. <laughs> So this is what we've been, um, you probably heard me say that when you came. <laughs> I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so uh, having worked very hard on maintaining a bike path open and uh, maintaining them with salt and 
and sand and remo removing the snow uh, fast enough in the morning. Uh, it really worked uh, for keeping people on their bikes uh, year long, even though, you know, it can be cold and snowy and icy. The, the actual days when it's too hard for some reason or for some people to be on your bike in the winter are, are few uh, in the four or five months of winter. So mm -hmm. we're working, working, working hard on this. Uh, but the opposition is always uh, complaining about it, always saying that mm -hmm. yesterday he was some one of the ele an elected uh, official from the opposition party was saying that we can't have a network that's bigger than tropical cities like Sydney or I don't know Buenos Aires because we're a winter city. But I mean, it's not true. <laughs> Yeah. People do winter sports, so why wouldn't they use their bike? Yeah. And how many, do you know how many people in Montreal bike or maybe what percentage of people, you know, get to work by bike or those high level numbers? Um, we, we're we waiting right now. We have a, a, a huge meta analysis that is made every five years. And so the numbers that we have, they're from... Uh, six years before, and the numbers of the new one, we are waiting for them okay. to be released right now. So we know that it's going to be very different. Great. But the very old ones that we, that the official old ones that we had was that in the central boroughs, uh, we had a 15% uh, of the modal share for our cyclists, which is our goal, but at the city scale. So of course, well, city not being the whole island because it's so like the territories are so different. You have very suburban, like uh, boroughs, uh, boroughs on the island, but the core, the urban historical core, uh, we, we want to go to, to 15%. But of course, here in the den the central boroughs, it's certainly at the level of 20. I wouldn't be uh, uh, shy to say those words because it's 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 very high. Great. Well, we I'm be on the network to see that it's just yeah. full people. Yeah. Great. Well, I'm really excited for, for those numbers to come out because I think it will be pretty impressive. 15% yeah. is already relatively pretty high, but mm. it sounds like it'll be much more. Um, and the, do you know how much the there's been a drop in injuries and deaths on the streets in Montreal? Has there been a big drop? Well, in, in, in 2019, for the first time ever, like <laughs> for the, for, for, there were no uh, deaths of cyclists on the network. Uh, of course, it's not. It's it's one year because from one year to another, we had between two or three uh, cyclists being killed by uh, people in cars uh, every year. Uh, for the pedestrians, though, it, we still have a lot of work to do, and we're also working on it very hard. Uh, the death toll for pedestrians is always around. Uh, maybe 20, 25 each year. And it's not going down yet. Uh, like it's, it's, it's waving around it. So we've, I've, I haven't talked about it at all in this presentation, but it's, we've, we went on with a vision zero uh, mindset and we're working hard on uh, pedestrians, uh, signals and all the, all the intersections. So, by adding a uh, bike infrastructures like the REV, like I've shown, of course, it comes with uh, m security measures also for pedestrians. So it's it's more safety for everyone. That's what we always say, even for people in cars, because they get to lower their speed. So if they get to crash for some reason, it's uh, it's less. Up Great. Yeah. No. It's, it's less than when you when people go fast. Definitely. I think that's really important to highlight and something I was going to ask you about. So obviously there's a lot more bikers and 
there were no deaths, which is amazing for, for bikers. Yeah. Um, but just how these changes, how do they impact people, say public transit or people in wheelchairs or people with disabilities who aren't riding bikes or can't ride bikes? How do, how do these changes impact those people? Hmm. Well, our, the cycling network is uh, fully and legally accessible for people using uh, uh, mobility help devices. So people in electric wheelchairs or a smaller electric help to go around, which are not scooters, official scooters, mm -hmm. uh, they can use the bike lane. So it, it makes going around in the city easier also for them. Um, and every time we add a new bike uh, lane, we, as I was saying, we work on the intersection so that it will be easier and safer to cross. So it, it just benefits everyone. Uh, this summer, uh, though, with the, the pop-up bike lanes that we've made in a very, very fast track uh, for the COVID situation, uh, sometimes, of course, we didn't get to pour concrete and make a good island for going up and down of the, the buses. So there were, it was not perfect uh, regarding uh, universal access and we know that, uh, but everything that we do for, for real, for good is, is, uh, is planned so that it's uh, easy to cross the street, to cross the bike lane and to go up and down uh, a bus. Great. Great. Um, so a lot of questions are coming in now. Mm -hmm. I'll try to, we'll try to get through as many of them as we can. So a couple people asked about the resistance. You and I talked about this too, but the resistance to these changes, and it's usually about parking um, and businesses and, and individual people um, are very scared of removing parking. Can you talk a little bit about how that's played out in Montreal and maybe what arguments you all have used in those discussions? Hmm. We always, um, well, we face the same, the same reaction here. Uh, I think it's just universal and it's the, the, everyone is just scared of any change. They, they, uh, they react to change. This is a human uh, normal, I guess, uh, reaction. But for, for parking, uh, if we have to remove parking, we just try to work hard on uh, a perimeter, do you say that? Uh, like a, a territory around where the, the oh, bike perimeter. lane, how do you say? A perimeter or? Yeah. And we 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 find out where is the parking? How many of them are they? Uh, on on Saint-Denis, for example, those those pedestrian cross at mid block we had to remove a lot of parking places to 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 build it so uh in other streets on other local streets around we've added free two hour parking for example and we've put mapped on on the street uh, showing where all the private parking are and uh well things like that we have a lot of uh parking places that are reserved for resident you need a special permit in your car to use them but we've we uh, we are not selling uh, temporary parking stickers that you can buy and stick to your window that gives you the right to use uh, during the day the, the the spaces that normally reserved uh, only for for resident mm -hmm. so we've just uh, we try to push on other options, trying to show people there are other options, uh, promoting the fact that there are bus lanes and metro station around. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's still, uh, I don't know if I can use the word struggle anyway. Sure. It's, it's, uh, yeah. We don't have a, a recipe for it. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, I, I have to push the fact that uh, the status quo is not an option and that car is occupying so much space in the city and that giving space to other mode is what we have to do if we're serious with the changes we want to to see for for our cities and for the, the climate. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, and the two little specific ones about people that do bike and concerns. So one is salt, um, and you know some bikers. Someone commented they're concerned about the salt um, impacting their bike. Is that an issue there? And then the other one is with steep streets. Do you find it hard to get bike infrastructure or get people biking on some of the steep? inclines mm -hmm. and streets in Montreal? Because we have that here in Burlington too. Um, actually, I guess people, uh, I don't hear complaints about salt. Of course, people are asking, would there be some alternative that wouldn't be so hard on our, on our bikes? But uh, at the end of the day, what's important is the path being safe and, the surface of the road being with without ice. So, uh, for what I I understand, and we have in Montreal uh, a group, a Facebook group that is called uh, Winter Bike in Montreal, and there are more than ten thousand ten thousand people on it, and they talk about oil and chains and tires and everything. <laughs> all the gear uh, that you, you need uh, when you bike in the winter and people just accept that if you bike in the winter well you you need to maintain your bike and keep your chain uh, greasy enough and uh, maybe you're gonna have to change this bicycle uh, at uh, in every so years um, and we do use sand also but there's so many things that we've been trying to use and very few things works as good as salt sure. <laughs> or just not working especially here it's not it's not finland we have so many up and downs and can be up uh, over the freezing level and the other day very below oh yeah we're right working with very very hard condition it's just it's not just going frozen for the whole winter like in Ulu right. or something so right yeah there's we've been trying some brushes like machine that comes and brushes the snow before it melts and it it's it works sometimes but just in between this and these uh temperatures so it's very sure. it's a very uh complicated science yeah yeah so, you, know, you just have to accept that you have to wash your your bike or just leave it frozen outside as much as you can, which sure. is what I do. Yeah. So someone asked the question, um, you know, what are you most proud of with this work that you've done? And what they were saying is, you know, there's different angles. There's the safety aspect, there's the environmental and climate aspect, um, access for people, you know, business and community. There's, there's so many different ways to look at these changes and what really motivates you and what makes you proud of these changes the most? Uh, having, having people telling me that they had left bicycle at some point in their life or that they never thought they would use that specific street with their bicycle or just go around in the city with bicycle. And now that We've made those infrastructures, those bike paths, those new ones, the REV. Uh, they, they're telling me, now I'm going to use it. Now I feel, f I feel safe to go on Saint-Denis and shop there and just go around. <clears throat> uh, this is making me very, very proud because this is, this is what I want. This is where it starts, having people feeling safe and comfortable using the their bike in the street then comes everything after that it the good for the environment the good for the the human scale uh, uh streets in the city um having people on their bike happy and safe this is what i really want because of all the good reason for that having people being so full of endorphins because they've been riding their bikes and they get to work or to school happier and motivated. Mm -hmm. This is really the, the, the accumulation of good individual effect 
which has a big impact then on the city and on the environment. Mm -hmm. How I could see that because you can't choose every benefits is good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great. And do you do you all have data or statistics on who is riding their bikes? Because you know, in these conversations, in a lot of cities that don't have good bike infrastructure, it's often like young, very fit, you know, white men that are biking. But usually when the infrastructure is better, it really shifts who's riding. Do you all have any data on that in Montreal? Not yet. As I was saying, we're waiting for them. Uh, the, the inquiry, is that the world? The big inquiry, the big study sure, yeah. had been done uh, last year and they take time to proceed all those, to process all those, all these data and put it in, in form. So I, we were supposed to have that. And I guess that COVID just postponed everything for some reason, but um yeah, so we're waiting for all those data. Of course, the counting doesn't tell us nothing about the the socio economic uh, profile of the the people on bikes. Um, yeah, we we agree that we need these these data. When I go, uh, like at the beginning of the week, I was walking along the new Rêve on Saint Denis, and it was in the afternoon, in between the bike hours. And it was full of people over 65. I was just amazed. And I wish I could have like take a picture of each of them to show everyone, look, it's because they always say, yeah, it's good for white, young, in people in shape. But it was not the case. Like people were riding it, old couples and some of them on uh, electrical bike. And I was so amazed. I was so, so proud to see it. Yeah, no, that's great. And I saw in some of the and kids too. Kids too. Yeah, I was gonna say in some of the photos you showed, a lot of kids were riding as well. And yeah. So you've seen a big shift in sort of who's riding and more different types of people riding on the streets. Oh yeah, we see it and we hear it. This is the comments that we get. My kids are yeah. they can now go to school uh, with that new bike path. So people are like fighting on social media, people complaining about the losing of parkings and others say, yeah, but this has changed our lives, my kid's life. And uh, yeah, we just hope that the, the, the power of the example of what you see on the street at the end will get to calm people, uh, hatred of, yeah. bike paths, of bike lanes. Great. So we're coming close on time. Um, so one question I wanted to ask, you know, you and I kind of joked about the title of the event and calling it a revolution because you said, you know, it's not yet really a revolution, but it's been some big changes in Montreal this last decade, some pretty major changes. So I want to ask you about going forward and what's coming next for Montreal and especially in the context of the climate crisis and the need to cut emissions to zero pretty rapidly and what is Montreal's vision for a real revolution in transportation um, and maybe not even just biking and, and walking but public transit and the overall vision to reduce emissions and fossil fuel. Um, we have a, a very good uh, subway and metro network uh, which has not been uh, increasing, developing for years and years, and we have a huge, you uh, have huge, uh, I don't know, steps to use it more because, well, at some points it's 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 full on some lines, and what we've been working hard on is to uh, prolong, uh, prolonging, no, um, prolong. Yeah, adding more station oh, yeah. at the end of which is which is not the terminus, and adding a new one was uh, a strong uh, engagement for us, for us, for the our mayor, which would be a diagonal one that would go through mm. lots and lots of boroughs of part of the city which are very badly the. Uh, 
the service of the public transport is very low there. And of course, those are the, uh, the, 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 the poorest, uh, the, the place where the social economics, uh, uh, Sorry, I'm looking for, for my, sure. the, the right words, but more low income neighborhoods. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So they don't, of <laughs> course, they're far from the metro, and the buses that get you to the metro don't pass very often. So this is uh, something, uh, what would be the word when you need to? It was badly made, and so few was made, so few investments, and so few. Uh, care was made for public transport for years. So now we need to... Uh, it was neglected and... Yeah, yeah. So, but it's very costly and it's very complicated because we have to negotiate with other government. Montreal can't pay all this alone. This has to be helped by the province, by the country. And so they're just fighting to see. Yeah, they do all agree, but they don't agree on who's supposed to pay for it. So. Uh, we're working very hard on it because this is something that we really need, you know. <laughs> this is the, what's lacking the most in, in Montreal is a better way to go around. For so many people, there's no other option than car. And most of those people are in low-income neighborhood and family, and they work far from where they live in industrial parts of the city. So it's a, it's... Yeah, it's a vicious circle of being poor and having to pay for an old car. That's 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 ridiculous. So we we really want to work on it, but it's a more long of a long shot because it's so the costs are so huge and it's so complicated. The Montreal Metro was was made in less than five years in the '60s, but we can't act the same way that <laughs> mm. uh, when people uh, that. Yeah, how it, things were made at that time. But this is what we really need. And the bicycle infrastructure, of course. Great, great, great. Well, do you have any um, other final points that you want to make and, and make people aware of? We have a lot of questions. I don't know if you saw them coming in on the right. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry uh, that I wasn't able to get to everyone with people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, did you have any final thoughts for, for folks and kind of things to take away and, and keep in mind as we look to make a lot of these changes here in our own communities in Vermont? Uh, well, I wish I could read all those questions right now. I, I see There's a lot, how, yeah. How many of them there was. Uh, well, feel free if you really wanna have answers and are very curious, you can always uh, find find me. My my email is my my, Counselor email is uh, full public and quite easy to find on the the, the city uh, website. So feel free to write to me, and I'm I'll try to uh, answer to you or, or by Facebook, where I'm pretty active too. Um, yeah, well, I wish we could. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think I'm quite uh, positive and uh, motivated to see how the changes are. Uh, taking place in our cities, in our North American cities, uh, even though, as I was saying at the beginning, I was hearing about Jane Jacob recently and her story and how the fights that she started are still going on. We're, we're still fighting against bad urbanism and promoters and capitalism in general. So we should keep the good work. Great. Great. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate it. And thanks for all the work that you all have done up there. It's really inspiring to so many of us down here to keep to keep pushing and, mm. and keep fighting those battles um, and, and creating better communities. Mm -hmm. Hope we can visit each other soon. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, be well and stay safe. And, and thank you again, Marianne. Thanks really for having me. It. Thank you so much. Great. And thanks for everyone who who tuned in and we will see you again um, next Friday at noon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.